Hello everyone, here we are going to explain some basic statistical functions in Excel to help you work on your case study assignment. We have a data collection being collected by a marketing team. The marketing team at an internet music site wants to understand who its customers are. The team sends out a survey to 95 customers asking for demographic information. One of the variables is customer age. For the 95 customers, the ages has been collected in the column A. We are going to organize the data collection into frequency distribution and use some charts to present what we have organized. To understand the basic information of our data collection, we can see our data is listed in first column, column A. So actual data resource is located from cell A2 until cell A96. To understand the data collection, we find out some basics. Minimum value, maximum value, A2, A96. That's our data located. A2, A96. So we find out the maximum. So that means the customer for this internet music site, the lowest age being collected is 12 years old. The maximum age or the highest age being collected is 84 years old. So we can get the range of our data collection. If we try to organize the data collection, into five classes. This is what we want to do. And then we can figure out the reference for the class width. We can use range divided by number of classes. So this gives us idea the width for each class will be 14.4. To make it convenient for us, we can use a little bit of wider width with the whole number. So the actual width we are going to use, for example, 15. And then we start organize our interval, lower limit, upper limit for each class. So we can either choose 12 or we can choose 11 or we can choose 10. Say if we choose our first lower limit is 10. Just for convenience, we just have to make sure all the class intervals we are going to organize, they're going to cover all the data being collected. So and then upper limit would be based on the lower limit and the class width. And our next lower limit must be equal to the upper limit of the previous class. So we pick up from here, and then we can auto fill this part. So actually, we can auto fill here, and we can auto fill here. Now we have five classes being set. From 10 years old to 25 years old, that's our first class. From 25 years old to 40 years old, that's our second class, and so on. And the lower limit of the first class, 10 years old, and the upper limit of the last class, 85 years old. And our original data collection is from 12 years old to 84 years old. So obviously, our five classes already covered all the data value we collected. Now we can give the class description. So that means customer's age, which is simply use age. So we give the description to 10 years old to and 25 years old. The reason we put under, so we try to avoid the conflict. 
25 years old not being included in the first class and the 25 years old going to be included in second class. The last class. For our situation, we can use under. There's no problem because our original data does not have 85. But if we do have 85 for last class, we can modify including 85 years old in that class. So our classes being set, we give a little column here so we can see first column. Next one, we're going to give it frequency. That is the count how many people from our customer survey they are in the age of the first class or the second class. So we just need to count. So here we go. We count with condition and with more than one condition, we use count if s. So our data resource located A2 to A96. Since we always search from this part, and we need to have dollar sign to make sure every time we search the same range, in this for preparing, we're going to do auto-filling. So it will save up a lot of time. So greater or equal 10. Since we have the lower limit being separated in the column, so we can conveniently pick up the information from the cell. This way, you can always make your Excel table functionable. Same area. Give it another condition. Pick up. Here we go. Close. And then we can do the auto filling. And we can take a check. See if we count them all. Total is 95 data. That's what we collected. So this is our basic frequency distribution being set. If we want to expand it a little bit, we can give relative frequency. So the relative frequency is the percentage of each class, how much percent of people belong to each class. So we just simply switch the regular frequency to relative frequency. So we use each regular frequency divided by the total frequency. Total frequency is our sample size, showing at the bottom 95. We prepare to do the auto filling. So every other cell going to divide the same number. So in that case, we give it dollar sign. We switch things to percentage with two decimal places. That's our standard. And then we can just simply do the auto filling. And we can see all together as 100%. Similarly, we can do cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is also called less than cumulative frequency. That means we do the adding little by little, cumulative them. So how many people belong to first class? How many be people belong to first two classes? How many people belong to first three classes? How many people belong to first four classes? That is the meaning. We add a little by little. Or we can say how many people are younger than 25 years old. How many people younger than 40 years old? How many people younger than 55 years old? So that's the meaning of less than come from. So simply, the first cell, we have only one class. And the second cell, we will add two together. And the next one, we will add three. Next one, we will add eventually. That's our cumulative, or called the less than cumulative frequency. Now, if we want to present this frequency distribution in that regular frequency time, and we insert a bar chart. Actually, it should be called 
histogram, since we are dealing with quantitative information, and our classes next to each other, there shouldn't be any gap in between. So we can do this part manually. Make the gap field. And if we want to show each bar clearly, we can add the border with some solid line. And we can also give a customized name of the chart of music site customers. Age distribution of music site customers. So this is our histogram to show the regular frequency. If we try to add polygon to this histogram, we can do it manually, directly adding the lines on this chart. And in this way, we can understand how the polygon should be played. We add, pick up a shape, add a line, so we just get the line first, and then we modify the line. So if we want to make the line red, make it a circle, we simply collect all the midpoints, and then we can copy the line, which is the two pieces, and then we put them together. So in this case, we can clearly see the polygon structure and the way we create it. For both sides, we imagine another class with frequency zero on the left side and on the right side. So we expand our line to the both sides, and we can clearly get the whole outline of this histogram. If we want to put them all together, you can group them. So after you group them, Move, move it around all together since you already grouped them together, okay? So that's our frequency distribution, histogram, and the polygon. Now we try to do something else. If we try to show relative frequency, we can highlight these two columns and we can get a bar uh, pie chart. And this will show up clearly. Relative group. You can also give this similar name. That's our pie chart. Clearly shows proportion. Okay, so we move it out somewhere. We have a lot of space. And then we go back. Say if we choose the age and choose the cumulative frequency. We highlight these two columns. And this would give us the histogram cumulative frequency. We're adding pie char uh, bar chart, and we can see the bar gets higher and higher. Similarly, we fill the gap, so we have gap, and then we give it a border, solid line, make the border black. Here we go. This is a cumulative frequency. When we try to do the polygon, on the cumulative frequency. Earlier we have the line, probably still there. Okay, so we paste the line. So now for the polygon cumulative frequency, we have different width, which is from corner to corner, to next corner, and to next corner. In this way, we learn how to draw the polygon based on cumulative frequency distribution, or with the cumulative frequency histogram, and we see the connection clearly.
So when you do your case study assignment, I hope you do this way and this gives you the understanding of the method. You don't have to use Excel doing the line chart separately and in that case you don't see the connection clearly. Right click and then you group them. So in that case they won't mess up if you want to move them around. So you can move it. So we created another chart. So here we have cumulative frequency histogram and polygon together. We have pie chart for the rapid frequency distribution and we have the regular frequency distribution histogram and polygon together in another chart. If we want to know the median age of the data collection, we can directly use the median our data location come out right away. Median 32. If we want to know average age of our customer, we can simply use average A2, A96. That's our data resource. So our average, if we use one decimal place, so the 35. 0.5 years old average. If we want to know standard deviation, so this is a sample standard deviation. So we can use STD here. We have sample standard deviation A2, A96. Come out right away. Sample standard deviation. If we want to keep it two decimal places, that's the answer. If we want to know first quartile, we can also use quartile function. Get this right away. We have two different functions you can choose. Any of them, they based on different estimation formula. So if we use the exclusive. So you want to get the first uh, quartile. So you give the parameter one. That's our first quartile. If you want to get second quartile, you give the parameter two. If you want to get a third quartile, you give the parameter three. That's your third quartile. So your interquartile range we call IR, IQR, interquartile range, which is the difference. Third quartile minus first quartile. That's the interquartile range. So if we want to know how many people, percentage of people younger than 30 years old in our customer service. So we want to get a percentage. So we count first. We count if we only have one condition. So our data resource, the conditions under 30. So we finish count, this gives us how many people under 30 years old. And we want to get a percentage, we divide how many people in our survey, 95. So here give us a percentage directly, and we can use a percentage, give two decimal place, 41.05%. If we want to know, how many people older than 70 or older than 65? So it's retired people. Normally, our standard retirement age, which is 65. So we can count if A2, A96 greater than 65. That's a condition. Close the bracket, finish the counting, divide by. And we can turn to the format here, 4.21%. So we come out with the right idea right away. 4.21% of the customers, they are older than 65 years old. Since we do have medium, we have first quartile, third quartile, and we also have our minimum and the maximum. And we can draw box plot. So we can draw it manually, clearly show our 
up. So we need to draw a bar, and we need to have a line, draw the line, and we modify the line, make it a thicker, and make it black. And we copy this line. Now we need to arrange our scale. Check our key values, and we can use a text box. Put it below, so which is easier for us to type in. So our minimum twice, and we have first quartile 26, me second quartile or median 32, and uh, third quartile 42, and our maximum. 84. This is our key value. So let's arrange the distance to make the scale proper. So 12, 26. This one uh, should be a little bit longer. 26 close to 32. 32 to 42. And then 84. That's way long. So it's about a so that's roughly, we just to give a roughly idea. So our 5C value, if you try to show it in a better way, you can get rid of the line, no line, get rid of the fill, no fill, and you just simply move your number as about here. So now, we can have our box plot. We need another little line. So this is our minimum left side. And this is our, and here is our right side. So our first quartile should be the left side of the box. And our second, third quartile should be the right side of the box. And our median should be marked in the proper position. It's not necessarily in the middle, but depends on what your value is. Okay. So here turn out this is the box plus. So we have five key values, minimum value, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and the maximum value. They all being marked in this chart. The whole idea is, in the blue box, 50% of the data belong to the box, or belong to the range from 26 to 52. And on the left side, outside of the box, you have 25% of data. On the right side, outside of the box, you have another 25% of data. That's what box plus is supposed to show give us an idea about the data setting, the allocation. We clearly see four equal percentage part of the data. They are in different range. Again, when you do the box plot this way and help you understand the statistical background, Hopefully you do not have to use the program to draw the box plot and you don't know what the Excel program is. And when you draw it this way, you clearly understand what you're doing, what you want to mark, five key values should be shown, and what the box should be located. Okay, you clearly understand the relationship. See you next time.